Yes, I'm done. And I want to see the GM. Sorry, it's busy. But he asked me to come and see you today. Well, that doesn't mean he'll see you. But I'll check for you anyway, so just wait here for me. Okay. Oh, I'll appreciate that, please. Yes, I, I arrived safely. I am now in the comfort of my hotel room. <laughs> yes. But I'll be leaving for my first meeting in about 10 or 20 minutes. Yes. Uh, you too now. Yeah? I love you.
Welcome. I missed you. How was your trip? It was great. Oh, honey, I have prepared your favorite pounded yam and chicken soup. Let me get it. No, no, no. It sounds appetizing, but not now, please. Not now? No, the, the last time I slept was 48 hours ago. My God. Yes, yes. The trip was hectic, and the NMPC project is just taking all my time and every dime that I have. Oh. I, I, I'm going straight to bed. Straight away? One more favor. Don't wake me up until I decide to wake up, please. Anything you say. I say so. Don't you know where the fridge is? Or have you forgotten your way around the house? I'm tired. I've had a hard day's work. And I'm certainly in no mood for this. You flew to Abuja with your boss, despite my objections? You come back looking like this? And you expect what? Me to give you an award for excellence? You know what? I'm not going to listen to this at all. I am not going to listen to it. He's married! That man, he's married! In case you don't know that, he has a wife! Married man! Until I come back in the evening, please. Hmm? Gotta go. Hey, 
less water to drink. Um, Franca, grab me a glass of water, please. Exactly what I meant. Can you see? Such yourself. I mean, your conscience. Okay. What do you want? What, why, why did you come? Jane, I need to go to the hospital. And you know we're still owing the doctor, so I need money to pay off the last for the last treatment. So I'll make an arrangement and you go have your treatment. No, come on, I'll take you. I doubt you the word gentleman exists on these shores any longer. How sure are you? Come on, ego. I'm a woman. I mean, we are women. Are you telling me that you wouldn't want to people like expressing emotions? Male expressions? You count on that. Oh, male expressions, yes and enough. to catch them in bed to confirm that. You should have seen Jim. 
Chim was looking completely lost. I mean, L-U-S-T. And that prostitute was just flaunting her backside like an Atilogu dancer. He, she was just almost half naked. I don't know it. I'll come in to you. And the guest queen is here. Guest, guest, guest. Mm. Peace. Oh, oh, peace. Hey. Peace. Hey. Peace. Hey. Welcome, peace. Hey. How are you? How are you? I guess it's fine. Peace. And you have been telling me tales. My dear, it is no tales. It is real. My husband is having an affair. Mm. Is there any man who does in these days? Mine is with the most dangerous of species. Is she a terrorist? She's worse than that. She's a secretary. This is really serious. Mm. Oh, we are not able to overplace the truth, are we? You don't know, Jim. I do. The look I saw in his eyes the day I went to his office was one I only saw in the first few weeks of her cotton. Then, I think you really have to do something. Something like what? Getting rid of the secretary, of course. How? Find a way, my friend. Are you a baby? Angie, don't rule. Don't put suspicions over your marriage. To rule your marriage. What woman wouldn't know when her husband is having an affair? The first sign is, he comes home late and very tired. The second one, he does not eat your food because he has had lunch late. Well, at least I'll do one thing. Confront him. Angie, don't do something stupid. Don't do something that's going to ruin your marriage. As for me, I'd rather share my husband with the male secretary than having a second wife or worse than being a single girl. That was not the vow I made before the boss. Welcome. Can't forget it. <laughs> My own babe is chilling. Mm -hmm. It's normal these days. Come on, grow up. Every girl screws around. Not when they have a fiance, for God's sake. Even when they have husbands. That guy is too poor for them. And then a rich dude who could pay their bills and shine some corn good. But I'm not exactly poor, am I? You're not that poor, but rich husbands never have time for bedroom affairs. You know that too. What are you talking about? All I'm saying is that it's neither here nor there. Look elsewhere, take my advice and live long. Oh. It's her boss, Charles. Her boss? In the office? Of course in the office. Well, that's a big one though. That's a big, formidable competitor. I can say that again. So what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? That's one question I've been asking myself. So? The truth is I don't have an answer. Fashy the babe. What do you mean, fashy the babe? I mean, bitch the girl. Look at us with a lot of blood out there. Snap your finger and you have one. Just look at yourself talk. You want me to just get in someone and dump the person the next minute? You don't understand. Make me understand. Well, I'll make you understand, okay? Because you and I may be dumb, but there's something in this world known as love. And I love that girl. <laughs> now what's up? Stan, you. Love somebody. Come off it. Hey, what the what the hell?
Jim, get off. Hmm. Manja, please. Have an early day tomorrow. With Frank, I guess. What did you say? With your saucy secretary who appears in the office half nude. Gee. No, that's not true. Jim, don't give me that crap. You've been having an affair, and you know it. I only found out with whom two weeks ago when I came to your office. Now I can see clearly the reason why you don't want me to visit your office. I won't take that from you. I wonder what she gives you that I don't. Angela, I provide everything for you, don't I? Huh? Everything. Except the love you promised me before the altar. I love you very much, Angie, and you know that. Yet your secretary comes before me. You're exaggerating, and you know it. Am I? Yes. You're the mother of my two beautiful children. And for, for a man with, with, with family, his wife and children are the source of his delight. Much more than his, his brain can ever stimulate. And that, my dear Angie, is lesson. Jim, why not face facts rather than this evasive method of your usual wise words? You cannot be happy all the time. Hmm? Happiness is not about intensity. It's about order. It's about rhythm. It's about harmony. Hmm? I'm just trying to put uh, Thomas Mann. <laughs> Good. And I guess that is lesson number two. Exactly. Let's hear lesson number three then. Music is not only pleasurable because of the sound. Music is sweet. Music is sweet because of the alteration between sound and silence. Without the alteration of sound and silence, there can be no rhythm. And you take it from me, Jim. If we strive to be happy by filling all the silence of life with sound, productive by turning all life's leisure into work, and real by turning all our veins into doings, we will only succeed in producing a hell on earth. And that, I suppose, can count for lesson number four. Maybe. Angie, you are my wife, I'm your husband, and then with you I have a family. For that, I'm indebted. So why allow a little romance between my secretary and I in the office to peel off your skin? Tell me it's not true. But you wanted to hear it. Jim! You promised! Look, you don't expect, like I said, to be happy forever. If you do, you'll be the most... You'll be so unhappy for the rest of your life. Look, we are living in modern times. Quickies in the office are as important as the contracts that flow through. A man who is not in control of his secretary is living a fool's paradise. I don't think I'm that stupid. I have an early day tomorrow. Angela, good night.
you have a flat tire. Well? <sighs> Pretty bad. Anyway, I could help you. I'm in no hurry, you see. Besides, it's no good for a woman. I mean, changing tires. <laughs> not, especially not in this kind of sun. Thank you. You're welcome. Spam, the jack is coming. So I'm if you go my way. Which is? Too late. That's my way. Get it. is pretty. I mean, she's hot. You know what? I think she has a thing for me. Hey. Who's that? She's wife. I met her today. She gave me a ride, man. That's great. How? It's your stuff now. I deflated her tires, caught up with her, offered to help, and before you could say Jack Robinson, moi, was cruising with her in a ride. <laughs> so how do you mean she's freaking out for you? Almost hear a heart calling, hammering for my name. Stan, Stan, Stan. <laughs> you rather me you want to rub out my car and she's scared. You don't know that. Charles, for five years I lived in the States. I've had more women and I've had glasses up here. Now, if I don't know anything, this one thing I know. I can smell a woman who is eager for mischief ten miles away. Mm. Big dog! You uh, man! Jingle like I see, I feel, feel, you know what I'm saying? Come on! Yeah, you man. Come on. Come on. Come on. This woman just wanted me to just stick my hands into her blouse, you know, and like stroke some ties, you know what I'm saying? On the road! Damn, man! Come Don't on! Surprise me. <laughs> Don't surprise me, it's not you. Forget, man! Forget, forget. It's when to take her. Ethics. Ethics, my friend. The longer you wait, the deeper you fall. <laughs> I thought you were out for a fast one, sharp one, one time. Wrong. Then what are you up to? I'm out to ruin the marriage. Oh. Ah, oh, enough. Welcome in my house. Ah, well, you're wrong. It's our house, Bulldog. I'm not going to allow this whore insult me in my own house. If you don't do something about it, I will. Angela, there's enough room for everybody. Please, just put your own pressure, please. Let her come in. No! You know what, Jim? 
Meet me outside. I will not take this insult for this ingrate. Ingrate? You didn't tell her, did you, Jim? Well, About you didn't what? Educate her, did you? Thank you. Actually, well, thank her. I've met you somewhere. The car? Yes. Um, your um, Stan. Stan. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you, ma'am. <laughs> but now I don't fancy strangers paying for my stuff. Oh. Next time you do that again, you'll be in for one big surprise. Yeah, hey, I'm sorry. Forgive me? Yeah, forgive me. Thank you. Actually, I was passing by and I saw your car. So I said, I don't think I should say hi. I thought you said you had a headache. Jane, what did that whole mean that I am an ingrate? Oh, that? Forget about it. No, Jane. I want to start understanding the real man that I married. Just keep your voice down. It's late. I will not, Jane. Let everybody wake up to the fact that my husband is a goat. Your tongue. 
Goat. Sit up. What's wrong with you? You want to wake the neighbors? I will wake them up. I will wake them up unless you tell me what she meant by my being an ingrate. Okay. A few months ago, the auditors found out some things about an account that was directly under my nose. And it could have led to my being sacked, but Franca stepped in and saved me. What did she do to the auditors? She opened her legs wide. Oh, come on, Angie. Yeah. And after that, she hooked my dear husband. And I know the next thing you're going to say is that she's blackmailing you. Well, yes. More or less, yes. Your husband is holding on to my treasure. My husband? I... I don't understand. His secretary is my fiancé. What? has been developing engine faults of late. Has it? Yes, I'm quite persistent. So what do you want me to do? I'm not a mechanic. I think it is no longer a matter for mechanics. I should rather be looking forward to a new engine. Well, well unless your account can accommodate it. If you're waiting for mine, you're in for Pretty long wait. Why? Aren't the NFPC wells flowing as usual? Not for frivolities and the kind of luxury you're asking for. But I was only asking for a new car engine. So come on for that matter, not the new car. Well, I guess uh, it's going to be a long wait. need to ask if that's if you are in any mischief. The question is with whom? Wrong question. Okay, Angie. What's eating you, Ego? Please, oh. Angie, don't blow your marriage. Jim is a man and he's born to be promiscuous. You're a woman and that is a different ball game. The Bible says in the books of um, the Bible. You have one. What do you take me for? An atheist? Not really. It's just that I'm surprised you have one. Well, to your disappointment, mm. I do. I'm not disappointed. It's just that I rather wonder which pass I Christ. That to treat a, a man that is cheating is by going outside to cheat. Ego! But it's true. She's not even certain if her husband is having an affair outside. Ego! I don't like your insinuations. You're making it look as if Angie is the guilty party. Her husband asked for it. Huh. What haven't I done for Jim? 
He told me he has no parents. That I would be his wife, mother, sister, niece, and all that. He asked me not to work. I quit the bank just to make him happy. I don't have a maid in the house just because he wouldn't stand one. I kept the house like a garden factory. He told me he doesn't want more than two kids. I gave him Stephanie and Junior. What haven't I done for that man? What haven't I done for him? I still don't think. And to pay me back, he has to keep a prostitute in his office that orders me around. Imagine I have to fill the form to see my own husband in his office. What? Oh. Was even bold to admit it. In his words, I give you everything you want. Why should a little romance between my secretary and I peel your skin? What? It's truly not what you think between Stan and I. Stan? Jim's secretary's fiance. It's not enough for me to get another car engine. I'm not saying this is all of the money, okay? Take this 30, go to the mechanic, and I'll give, give you the balance. You still don't understand. He cannot get a new car engine for $30,000. It's like the poor center, all right? Just all of Can't believe this. Ego, Jim has completely gone nuts. He brings her to a matrimonial home to fight me. This is ridiculous. You have to do something. Do something, Angie. I want to do something. But honestly, this kind of mess is not my stuff. I've never in my life quarreled over any man. <laughs> I'm not talking about any man. You're talking about your husband here, Angie. So what do you want me to do now? Visit a Babalao or start a Pentecostal worship. So are you going to fold You know this is not my life. I cannot do all that. So are you going to fold your hand and lose your husband to his secretary? I will do something. But definitely not what I shouldn't do. So what are you going to do now? I know what to do. to go now. Get you. It's costing me a fortune trying to keep our meetings at expensive places going. Just yesterday, it cost me 50 grand out of my ready joint account. 50 grand? What for? For car engine. Car 
painting. Doesn't a husband? That's the idea, man. A husband is bound to discover. And then the crack starts building. Oh, that's the idea of breaking up the marriage. Yeah. yeah. Then rejoice. Have fun. I am. That was all the fuss about drying up your accounts. to a family of mine. become the subject of your interest about where I am coming from. Are you out of your mind? Hmm? I not only came to this house hungry, I met an empty house and I met an empty kitchen. Jim, you are living in the past. What is that supposed to mean? Hmm? Are you out of your mind? Am I? And that car that I had now, is that not the same car you said needs a new engine? Oh, so you believed I would wait for you forever. <laughs> Jim, you're not the only bird that can fly. Come back here, my friend. Fly. And where are you flying from at this hour? Jim, that's the beautiful thing about freedom. I am now the master of my own affairs. That will be over my dead body. Just. Great. And you know what? I have a friend who has promised a condolence gift of a coffin should you drop dead. <laughs> Mind? Hmm? D don't do that. No, don't, don't. Just listen to me. Listen to me.
come over you. It's pain by touch. You've had your time. No. So let me just end it. Everything. No, no, worry. Not, not this, not this way, not like this. What's happening here? 